Kevin Frazier said he would take care of the Danettes. Um, and then we all we also got them makeup, you know? Dan, yeah. you, need, oh. you know, we had to get them makeup. The Glean team sent over um, a makeup artist, and so we got them makeup. So throughout the segment, we'll get them power, you know, make sure they don't get well, shiny. We want the Danettes. You see, you, you, got, you got them, right? You. They got, uh, they, they sprayed your head with something, Fritzy. What yeah, is that? Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. There was there was some kind of strong, powerful aerosol can okay. coming at me. It was not hairspray. It was not hairspray. It wasn't paint. It wasn't anything for the Because there is that hair, hair in a can. We did that once, and yeah, that we did not work did, that did not well go. at all. <laughs> yeah, Paulie. Dan, the makeup artist, I was talking to her, and I said, can you tell how long a person's been out at night if they went out really late? She goes, oh, yeah, I could tell by the circles under a person's eyes. She goes, I have to uh. deal with that. And then I said, how long did the Danettes look like they went out? She goes, it looks like you guys don't go out at all. <laughs> you look well rested. That is true. We have to get up early. Although I think she may have noticed that Seton... I did ask what shade gets rid of 12 beers last night. <laughs> so now we can take care of that. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You know, it, what's funny is, is that I, I get the whole Connecticut vibe because when we were at the Worldwide Leader, yeah. they just didn't care what you wore. And I remember protesting, and um, I used to pick up my ties on Scott Van Pelt's desk. He had a pile of ties, and you just go through and you pick out one, and you grab it. And I was like, it doesn't matter. I wore the same jacket for a week <laughs> on NBA Tonight. I was just like, I don't care. I'm going to wear the same jacket every night. Is anybody going to say anything to me? And no one said a word. They are like, great show. Things are great. I was like, do you realize I'm wearing the same thing every night? Dude, who cares? There was, was, there was like a, a community grouping of ties. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Miller had this as well, where you just walk by and you just grab a tie and you say, you take right. a tie. Yeah. I, I remember somebody did uh, baseball tonight, and I took the tie that they wore on baseball tonight and used it on SportsCenter <laughs> like 30 minutes later. It was crazy. You could literally wear anything. And, and that, and there was no place to change. There's no place. So I have like Tim Hardaway in my cubicle in his underwear. Like I walk around the corner. <laughs> Tim's in his underwear getting dressed for the show. I'm like, hey, okay, Tim. Good luck. I right, I got you. But do you remember when the NBA changed its yeah. its wardrobe policy? Yes. But people think that's Iverson related. Mm -mm. And I was told it was Steve Nash related, because Nash did not dress. He was not Ever. clean when he and, and you know, it was jeans and t shirts. He looked like he was coming off, you know, the beach. Well, if you remember. In the heyday, Michael Jordan and the Bulls and those guys, they came in the arena clean. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember the first time Michael put on headphones and everybody was like, what in the world is happening? But It was I, for practice. It was for practice in Utah. But people got upset like, oh, who does he think he yes. is? Like, he's tuning out the rest of the world. He's better than everybody else. He got criticized for yeah, wearing he those did. headphones. Because all of us would wait. At the, at the entrance to the tunnel, and then we would literally do this huge crowd around Michael and walk in with him. Yeah. And so Michael's walking in, he puts on headphones, and we're like, what are you listening to? He was listening to something like Easy Listening, like it was something off a of hidden beach, his um, record label. Yeah, it was like Yanni or something <laughs> like that. But it was we just all thought it was the, the craziest thing that Michael had on headphones. But they used to come dress so well every game, and but, that was the thing. But I never understood why these guys would fight this, that – you know, Iverson wanted to wear a throwback jersey and chains and a hat on backwards or a do rag, whatever he was going to wear. But th they finally dis you know realized you can showcase something. Westbrook, right. look at Westbrook now. Sure, like these guys come in. Dwayne Wade, they come in but, saying, "Look at look at how I look." Yeah, look at me. And also, those guys are a business and they understand yeah. that they're marketing. But also, I just say this, and I'm I'm not anti Allen. I love Allen Iverson, but what I am is that you are the head of a multi million dollar corporation. And you just have to keep that in mind, that every day you, you, when you go into that arena, there are millions of dollars. I mean, guys are making $20, $30 million a year. That's behind you. That's who you are. You represent this corporation. So represent it in a, in a manner that you can go out and get endorsements and, and be a leader in the community. And, you know, I know, like Charles would say, oh, I'm not a, I'm not a role model. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And, and every kid that's watching, whether it's my kids or somebody else, they're watching, they look at how you look when you walk into that arena. He's Kevin Frazier, co-host of Entertainment Tonight, kind enough to join us here again in the Man Cave. Now, you cover Hollywood. Yes. Is there somebody who is the equal personality-wise in Hollywood of LeBron James? LeBron James. I don't know that there's a LeBron, because LeBron, understand this, he's changed. And I think you all, you see that. And we see it in the ventures into Hollywood. I mean, you've never seen an athlete who goes and, seeks out Warren Buffett. When I saw him sitting with Warren Buffett, when he said, I'm down with Warren Buffett, 
that changed the way I thought about LeBron. Because well, I also, that train he, wreck, he was great in that movie. He was incredible. And I loved watching the people who don't really follow sports. In Hollywood, people don't follow sports. I, I, I don't know how to break this to you guys. <laughs> they don't follow sports. I can walk into work, and there'll be one guy in the corner be like, you're on Dan Patrick. <laughs> you know? um, but they don't, literally. And so they were like, this guy, LeBron James, he was really funny, but he's so big. He's like, he's a big, huge basketball player. He was a great actor. He has more stuff coming up, and he's branching into producing stuff. What he's doing, Maverick, is great. Um, they really have put together a multi-level corporation. I, I don't I don't know if there are guys like that. I mean, Will Smith, yes, in a lot of ways. But personality-wise, where he's passive-aggressive, you know, you know, it's just he, he has a different personality. Yeah, there's a little... Uh, Will's way more direct. I mean, but that that's the closest you would get, you know? Would be Will Smith? Yeah, because Will is... I look at a guy who does so many things. He's multi-talented. Yeah. He's multifaceted. He can move in and out of things so easily. And he has command of a situation. Like LeBron now has command of the situation. And he can take on all comers. Will is that way. Will's that guy. But do you under, do you think you understand who Steph Curry is more or LeBron James? Well, we understand Steph Curry more because we understand his background better. You know, we understand his dad and his mom and his family and how he grew up. Um, you know, with his dad being an NBA but player. He might it be, took a movie to understand LeBron. He might be cockier than LeBron James on the court. Of course. Well, yeah. I mean, Steph, Steph turns, when he shoots a three and turns around and starts running, it's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I'm in my living room screaming. But, but at the why, top of is my that, why is that okay in basketball? If this was baseball, that would be a bat flip or you'd be staring down. Because basketball is about style. Basketball is about style. In, in, in but why can't baseball, baseball they, be? They hold on to these archaic rules. I know. You know, I, I mean, think about how many fights there'd be in basketball if they if people got upset that you showed them up during a play. Think about how many fights there would be. And baseball really, it's what hurts baseball is these old archaic rules that are like, you showed me up. The flavor and the style and all those things, that's what makes the next generation love the game. And baseball players are playing by rules that were there when Walter Johnson was pitching, you know, and Christy Matheson was on the mound. And, you know, guys are like, this is how it's been since 1899. I was like, yeah, but in 1905, black people couldn't play baseball. So you got to change. You got to continue to evolve. Well, that'd be like sh shooting a set shot in basketball because that's the way you used to shoot back yeah. in the 50s. And guys would just run off the court, you know, like. Bob Cousy just ran off the court. He'd dribble around, you know, he'd dribble <laughs> off the clock, and he'd run, throw the ball up, and he'd run off the court. Yeah, Paul. We got a couple of notes. One negative, one positive. Which do you want first? Well, give me the negative. <laughs> the negative, the, the fine ladies from Trunk Club have to leave, and we have to get them the clothes back, so we got to start. Getting naked? Getting naked, which is not good TV. <laughs> okay. The second, I'm checking my notes. Kevin Frazier may be the first ever two-time in-studio in one week guest in show history. Wow. Well, he earned it. Yeah. You, uh, you killed it. You killed it on uh, Monday, and you delivered on Friday, man. Well, I appreciate you guys having me back. I just, they're in Hollywood. And I know, and see, here's what's happening. Adam Sandler is the only guy in Hollywood can get away with what he does. Have you seen what he wears? It's crazy. He's the only person in Hollywood who wears sweats to a premiere. And everybody's like, that's just Adam. He, it is, he is who he is. Like, he'll wear old sneakers and sweats and a crazy jacket. And you're like, what in the heck is he doing? And everybody's just like that. He wore pants on Monday night to the movie premiere. They were corduroys. And he said, I got dressed up, Danny. It's crazy. <laughs> he gets away with it. No one else in Hollywood does that. So I, I know that's your role model, but don't let it always oh, no, be no, a role no. model. No, it's not, no, our, no, it's not a role model. No? No. Okay. no. Right. Clooney. Clooney's Clooney. Clooney. Yeah, yeah. Clooney always clean. Like, yeah. you see Clooney, he's always clean, and he's always so cool. Like, Clooney reminds me of Jordan. You know how Michael can say no to you? And you're still happy. <laughs> Michael Jordan is the one guy in all uh, I've ever met who will tell you no on an interview. He'll see you and he'll be like, Kev, what's up, man? Hey. And you're like, hey, Mike, can I talk to you real quick? You know I'm not stopping. I'm not going to talk to you, but it's good to see you, brother. <laughs> and you're like, Mike just shouted me out. I'm good. But but Jeter and Brady are good at doing yes. this, too. Derek Jeter is great. And Derek Jeter, once again, another guy like Clooney. So smooth and cool. And Jeter always dressed to the nines yeah. like he's the captain. So when Clooney walks in a place, you're just like, Clooney. And he, you know, and he'll look at you and be like, what's going on? How have you been so good to see you? No, I don't have time to stop. I got to get in there. <laughs> You're like, all right, but you, you don't, don't shout at me you, out. You don't, you don't mind being blown no. off? No. Or they'll give you, hey, good to see you again. How's your mom doing? Great. Okay. Yeah. See you soon. Yeah. You're like, uh, hey, thank you again for coming no, no, in I, and delivering. I want to thank the Gleam team in the Trunk Club yes. for hooking these guys up. And, they you look know, great. They uh, guys, look great. Guys, you, you got to start taking off your clothes. You got to get, <laughs> get them back here.
Uh, Kevin, thanks for joining us. Always great. And I'll see you guys next time you come in. And next time in Milford, um, it's a bacon, egg, and cheese croissant. Yes. I, okay. Okay. Hey, I hooked me you up got with a that. sandwich, man. I got a sandwich. They were like, dude, we got you a sandwich. I was like, hey, man. <laughs> and I get to shoot a jumper. All right. Yeah. All right. Woo. Woo Only the best. <laughs> the Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.